Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another Daily Drop here on TarHillIllustrated.com. I'm THI publisher Andrew Jones, and the topic today is Carolina basketball. And if you can see I'm coming to you from my house. I'm in my home office, no longer traveling around. Season in that respect is over, so I actually get to be at home, reintroduce myself to my wife and daughter and the dogs, and take the dogs for a 1,000 walks to make up for the walks they didn't have. Here we are, anchored down for the time being now, and we got a lot of Carolina basketball to discuss. We're going to hit them in a bunch of different drops. David and I will do a podcast. Jacob and I will do our shows. Plus, we have football stuff coming up. We haven't had football access for the last few weeks because of the, the main media that covers UNC football also is the main media that covers UNC basketball. And since we've been away with the basketball team, Carolina was football was waiting for basketball to end. And they're going to kind of relaunch our access. So Saturday, we will be over in Chapel Hill beginning a couple, you know, hitting hard football for a couple of weeks before, uh, up to the spring game, April 20th, when spring practice ends. So if you are in dire need of Carolina football content, we'll have it coming to you here in the next few days. All right. So the topic at hand is very simple. What's on tap for this week? This is a crucial week for Carolina basketball. The season ended, and the early processing toward the next season has already begun. In fact, Hubert Davis said on his radio show Monday night that he was already looking ahead to next season while flying back from Los Angeles a few days ago. And you got to, because the portal ridiculously opened the Monday of the NCAA tournament. It needs to wait a couple of weeks. It needs to be a smaller window. It is open until the end of this month. So there's a lot of time for kids to make decisions. Uh, the good thing about it is they get a chance to see what kind of movement is made in their program and other programs, but there are way too many chess pieces going on out there to, in order to be able to uh, cogently keep track of. And we'll do our best. And our focus, obviously, is North Carolina. And, and that's kind of what we want to talk about here. So in order to know what chess pieces the Tar Heels need, Hubert Davis has to first talk to the kids that are in the program that have remaining eligibility. That does not include Armando Baycott. His career is over. Does not include Cormac Ryan. Does not include uh, Paxson Wojcik. Their careers are over. It does include R.J. Davis, who can use his COVID year and come back. It does include Harrison Ingram, who has one more year of eligibility. And it includes other guys who might be looking at other alternatives, such as Seth Trimble, such as Jalen Withers, such as Jalen Washington, and so on. So how does Hubert build the, the roster for next year based on the conversations he's having this week, based on not, what he knows about the freshmen coming in? And by the way, Ian Jackson and Drake Powell playing the McDonald's All-American game on it was Tuesday night, last night. So they have talent coming in. James Brown also coming in as part of the freshman class. So all these things have to be mixed into a pot in order for Hubert to really get an idea of what the, the ingredients he needs. Does he need a little bit more salt, a little bit more pepper, maybe some paprika to spice it up? I would think paprika is good because you got that in Cormac Ryan. You got that in Harrison Ingram because they gave the team a ton, a ton, or as Roy Williams would say, a crap load of vitality so i'm sure hubert recognizes what mixes and what doesn't after three years of doing this because he's had a little bit of both so certainly knowledge is his best friend right now so the conversations are happening with each player and there are some things that hubert probably already knows about decisions some guys have made or will make and with that he will tap into the portal. Now, we have reported the direction Carolina we knew already was going to go in the portal. David Sisk has been all over that, exceptionally well connected. And we've reported that on our boards. I think some of you could figure out what they might need. If you want to know for sure, go on over our board because they're expanding that now. They're going to look at a lots of different players, but there's a type of player or two that are the primary focus now, but we believe it could branch out depending on decisions that are made. So when you're Hubert Davis, 
if you sit back in his office, and we've seen his office through the weekly ACC conference call Zooms, if he's got a massive tote board in front of him, he's got the for sure gone guys over here. That's where Cormac and Paxson and Armando are. Okay. The could be's are RJ and Harrison because they both have decisions to make. RJ is not really on any draft boards, but as one person said, he's not getting any younger. And the longer a guy stays in college, the less the NBA is interested. That's what I was told. I don't necessarily buy into it, but in the case of RJ, maybe he's shown all he can show in the college level, and perhaps he needs to go to a different style, older players, different approach at the next level to show what he can do. A guy like Armando, by the way, benefited from coming back because he became really, really good at the things that an NBA team would ask him to do. As Armando said, when I asked him back in late January about something, he said, Hey, nobody at the next level is going to run any plays for me. So he understood that. And he enhanced all those other areas of his game. And he's more NBA ready now than he was this time a year ago. RJ based on being a guard in college, might not be any more NBA ready a year year from now than he is today. So perhaps that enhances his decision, that that triggers his decision to go, or maybe he comes back because there's some other things at play. We're going to go specifically into RJ in another drop later this week. Harrison, we're going to go specifically into him in another drop later this week as well. But Harrison has to weigh returning versus going as well. He actually might have more a guaranteed place at the next level in the NBA than RJ because he is on the draft board. Some late first round, lots of second round, lots of mid-second round. So he'll have a decision to make, and these conversations will be with, will will take place with Hubert, uh, with his family, and with some other people as they continue to get information for the players. The other guys might be a little bit more reactionary, might be a little bit more personal preference. Some some players might say, you know what, I love being here. I love being a part of this program. I understand who I am as a player. I understand where I fit down the road professionally as a player, and I want to stay here and keep this experience, or I want to go somewhere else and play more, or I think I can be more. I need to go somewhere where I can showcase my game and develop my game differently. All those conversations are being had, not just with Hubert. Players are having them with their families. They're having them with other people because they can seek counsel now. So that's what this week is all about. An awful lot of what you see or don't see on the court for North Carolina next season might depend a lot on how those conversations go this week or just what people have already decided. The players say they don't think about it during the season. And by and large, I don't think they do. But they also have a pretty good idea. Usually, if you're going to go, it's not one of those things you ponder, 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 and then say, okay, I'm going to go. Usually, when you go, you know pretty quickly you're going to go. The pondering is what usually leads people to come back. Because if it's not a slam dunk leave, then you, you're better off coming back. A bird in hand is better than a bird in a bush. Two birds in a bush. So... I think that's the way some of these guys will operate. My guess is Harrison has a very good idea already what he's doing. My guess is RJ already has a very good idea what he's doing. And whatever those decisions are, they will let people know probably sooner rather than later. And the same goes for some of the other guys. If some players hit the portal, I think we'll see that pretty quickly. So keep an eye out for stuff. We will have it covered here on Tar Heel Illustrated. There's a lot of chatter, a lot of intel going on our message boards right now. David is dumping info like crazy, either on the board or with premium content items. And you can only access that if you are a premium subscriber for just $8.33 a month. You can have a one-year subscription to Tar Heel Illustrated. You can be a Carolina Insider too. You can be the guy that goes to the bar or the 19th hole or the, the the water cooler at work or whatever it is, and you know what's going on with Carolina the Portal because you're reading it on THI, and you can only access it if you become a premium member. And it's a drop in the bucket, guys. It's like two candy bars now. I was just out in California. It's a little more than a gallon of gas out there. So if you're in California and you love the Tar Heels, 
It's a gallon of gas plus, basically, each month to be a member of THI. Anyway, stay with us this week. We are crushing it with where the program stands. We've got a lot of uh, postseason content rolling out, putting a bow on the season. There is no shortage. They stopped playing the games. We didn't stop doing the work, guys. We're going to continue to kick some derriere covering this program. And also, for the football folks out there, we are going to get a lot of football stuff coming here very shortly. And by the way, Lee Wardlaw is crushing it on the recruiting trail for football. So make sure you check his stuff out on our site as well if you are a fan of football recruiting. I'm AJ, and I will see you tomorrow.